Hey, Star, how are you? Uh, I'm going to go over a little bit, a couple of these things on Sunday. And uh, so hopefully, uh, you know, this is going to be able to jive and make sense here. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, thank you for this time we can come together, Lord. And we thank you for this understanding that you're going to give us tonight, that you would be here with us and that we would learn a little more about ourselves, that we would come to understand a little bit better about who we are and why we react in the way that we do and how it relates to our relationship with you and how that was that was damaged at one time Lord, and that we struggle every day because of that that brokenness that happened to us so father be with us here tonight it is in christ's name that we pray and all god's people said amen okay uh the first thing i wanted to do um is get out the uh, sheet that I sent you of Psalm 103. Psalm 103, okay? And in Psalm 103, it says, in verse 10, we're going to pick it up in verse 10, where he says, He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Hi, Julie. We're just getting started, huh? We're just getting started. Okay, um, so this Psalm 103, uh, I happen, and I've read this many times, many times, you know, very, very famous Psalm. Uh, you know, our, our sins are as far as the east is from the west. They're a polar opposites. And so I was looking a little deeper into this psalm here, and it talks about the heavens, and it talks about the earth, and it talks about, you know, the mechanism in which God has taken away those transgressions, those iniquities. He's not dealt with us according to our iniquities. And so I was looking at this a little bit, and I want to show you, this is just something I was just, you know, looking at. I want to show it to you guys. All right, let me, uh, let me see if we can get some kind of, I don't know, can we see that? Let's back it up a little. Okay. So what I was looking, what I was kind of, you know, yeah, there we go. That looks a little better, I think. So what I was looking at was, you know, <clears throat> So this psalm talks about the east, east, and the west, right? East, east on one side, west on the other, and that's how far our sins are away from each other that God has dealt with us. Let's make this a little bigger. West, east. And so I got thinking about this, and I'm like, what does this kind of make me think of? And that was like a compass, where you have north, right, and south. And so I was looking at this, and, and, and I'm, I'm saying, well, Scripture tells us in this, in this psalm that it's the heaven... And the earth. So if we take that understanding and we put heaven on top and the earth right on the bottom, interesting, okay? Now, the mechanism in which God helps us deal with our sin, right? That takes it away. If we connect the dots here, is the cross. It's the cross. And so, isn't that what Psalm 103 is absolutely talking about here? It's, it's showing us, right, that because of the cross, because of the cross, that he takes away our sins. We're not punished according to our inequities. Just as heaven is higher than the earth, so our sins are as far as the east is from the west. Is from the west. So, you know, I, I will tell you, 
the interesting thing about this is that God always shows us more, doesn't he? He always shows us more, no matter what is happening in our lives, no matter what's going on. Um, when we we talk about Scripture and we get into Scripture, that God has always shown us something new. And that there's always things that we can understand. And always that God is trying to give us. So in that light, in that light, hey, Lynn. So in that light and understanding, all right? And if you missed that first part, um, you know, you can always, you know, rewatch that. It's, it's quite interesting, I thought, um, when we start looking at that. So what I want to do now is I sent you out those sheets. I sent you out the sheets, and we're going to talk about insecurities. All right? And this is what one of the sheets that I sent you out, and we're going we're gonna to explain it. And so you can look at your sheet, or if this, you could see this. Yeah, I guess it's okay. All right, I guess it's all right. Okay. Now, when we're trying to, to deal with something, deal with this, this situation here, right? We all have insecurities. It doesn't, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how much power you got. It doesn't matter how much money you have. We all have insecurities, every single one of us. And so I'm just trying to get it so we can see most of it. Okay. All right. So I want to take you over to Genesis, all right? Genesis 2. Genesis 2. And in Genesis 2... We read in verse 7 where it says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of, breath of life, and man became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed, and out of the ground the Lord made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life was also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Then the Lord God took the man, and he put him in the garden of Eden to tend and to keep it. So, we have a couple of things that God is explaining to us here in these verses, right? He's explaining to us that, number one, number one, we had purpose. We had relationship. We were in a, a place where everything was working hand in hand, right? The Lord, verse 16, And the Lord commanded the man, saying, Of every tree in the garden you may freely eat, but the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in that day that you eat it you shall surely die. And the Lord God said, It is not good for man to be alone, I will make him a helper comparable to him. All right. Now, let's look and see what is happening here. All right. So what we see is this. They were in a perfect relationship with God. Right? Right? A good relationship, no matter what the relationship is, is going to have certain pillars of relationship embedded within, right? Trust, faith, belief, and hope. So, when we look at this, right, when we understand this, that because of the love that they had for one another, this is where they lived. This is where they lived. Trust. They trusted God. They had faith that he could and would do what he said that he would do for them. They had belief that he had their best interest in mind, right? And therefore, they had hope in the future. And he told them one thing, do not eat of this tree, because if you eat of this tree, it's going to give you something that's going to change our relationship. It's going to change our relationship. Hmm. So, when we go on in Genesis and we see that they did eat of the fruit, okay? They, they ate of the tree. And the first thing that happened was what? 
the first thing that happened is what? They were naked. They noticed they were naked. Right? They looked at each other and immediately they had to clothe one another. So shame had entered the world for the first time. So shame, right here, was never in this relationship before. And who is it between? The man and the woman. And then ultimately God also. So shame now enters the world for the first time. Right? When God comes and he calls out to them, right? where are you? Come out. What does Adam say? I was afraid to come out because we were naked. Fear. Fear then enters the world for the first time. Along with that, in the broken relationship that we have now, right? Loneliness and separation. The bond that they once had was not there. That's why they wanted to be clothed. Because the covering that God had given them, this covering of love, where they resided in this perfect situation of trust, faith, belief, and hope, was now taken away. It was now taken away. So now they're dealing with, for the first time in their lives, insecurities. They're dealing with insecurities. This is a direct relationship to the brokenness that happened to them in the garden. We, we, we need to understand this. So, we all have insecurities, right? We all have these insecurities. And they can manifest themselves in many different ways, right? And we all have a couple of these. So, there is jealousy, anger, emotional outbursts. This is a big one, the emotional outbursts is a true understanding that there is no peace or joy in your life. An emotional out, outburst is just a, is just a, 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 it's an outpouring of your brokenness that is in, inside of you that really needs to come out. And so if our relationship is broken, that may lead us to infidelity, right? If we can't be honest and, and you know, with with each other and God, then then where does where do we sit? Physical abuse. Many times it degrades into physical abuse because when people get frustrated and they can't deal with the situations anymore, what do they do? What do they do? Yeah, it always degrades. You know, if I can't, you know, talk my way, figure my way, you know, manipulate my way out of it, uh, many times it does turn to physical abuse. A lot of times it's alcohol. You know, alcohol and drugs. You know, really, we, we have to understand <clears throat> that when Christ tells us that, you know, he wanted to give us life and he wanted to give us this abundant life, um, that means living life. Where alcohol and drugs rob you, they rob you of the life that you were intended to live. It deadens our senses and our understanding of everything around us, right? We don't actually live Life, we exist through life. How about silence? You ever meet somebody that's really withdrawn? You know, they don't want to talk to people. They don't go out. They stay in the house. Anxiety related to this. It sometimes leads to depression, which also can lead to self-harm, right? All these things. Snowballing. Growing, Right? getting bigger, getting more debilitating. Hate. Hate is related to all these things. But what we need to realize is these are just the symptoms. Right? We all deal with these. But where do they come from? Come back over here. It's the brokenness here. We, have bro we no longer have trust in God. Right? We no longer have faith that God is good and God does what is right for us. Therefore, we don't, we don't believe that he has our best interest in mind. And therefore, we have no hope in the future, which then leads us to alcohol. It leads us to drugs, right? We, we, we can't control ourselves anymore. Uh, one of the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians 5, it says that 
is self-control. So when we have an emotional outburst, it's an outpouring of our frustration, all related back to this. Now, how does this affect our other relationships, whether it be uh, siblings, um, mother, father, uh, you know, uh, significant other, um, spouse, uh, children, no matter what it is, right? If we're supposed to have a good relationship, then we have to trust that person, right? These will always come into the picture. Fear, shame, loneliness, and separation. They'll always come into the picture. We have to learn to deal with these things constructively. What we need to stop doing is reacting to the physical symptoms over here. Jealousy, anger, emotional outbursts. We need to get past that. If we're ever going to heal these things at all, if we're ever going to heal ourselves, if we're ever going to have decent relationships, we have to get back into this place. I can trust that person. I have faith, you know, that they're, they're going to be there for me no matter what. I believe that they have my best interest in mind. Therefore, I have hope for the future, right? If we don't have that, then we have a broken relationship. If we have a broken relationship, then what comes in? Fear, worry, shame, loneliness, separation, which then leads us to deeper insecurities, which then manifest themselves like that. And I will tell you, that this spiritual brokenness will manifest itself in these things and also will turn into physical things. They will turn into... How many times did Jesus link sin to physical illness? All the time. All the time. So, Ephesians 6 says that, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, and put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the wiles of the devil. Devil loves insecurities. Loves him. He'll throw him at you, man. He wants you living here. He doesn't want you living here. He wants you living here. And therefore, he will do everything he can to keep you emotionally unbalanced. He will do everything he can to keep you in alcohol, to keep you in drugs, right? You, anything to push your buttons, to raise your anxiety, that depression will just take over, right? And, and hate will rule your life. I mean, he loves people that hate. The, the, there's never a good reason to hate, period. Zero. Zero reason. Especially if you're a believer, there is no reason to hate. All right? God should love everybody. I made everybody. So we have to realize that we're not dealing with these things. Right? Look what, look what Ephesians says. It says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Therefore, having girded your waist with truth. And I think, Linda, you, you asked the question, how do we know what the truth is? And, <clears throat> you know, it's interesting. I think that <clears throat> many times... Truth can be twisted into what we want to believe. And what we need to realize is that, what do the facts say about a situation? No spin, no, you know, this, this one turning it here, this one turning it. What, what is the truth? The truth is that God says you shouldn't hate, that you should love, that you should have understanding. He says, you need to understand that these four things, trust, faith, belief, and hope, lead you to a loving relationship with anybody, God and others. So if this is not right, all this is what you deal with in your relationships. If this is not right, right? God knew what we're dealing with. And so he gave us the understanding and the ability to deal with these things a little better, right? In 1 John 4, he says, Love has been perfected us among us in this, that we have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so we are in the world. We need to realize and understand what God's trying to tell us here. Now, <clears throat> 
when we when we're dealing with this stuff, right? And we will all deal with this stuff. And sometimes it seems like it's worse than others. If we have physical infirmities, it tends to make us, you know, focus a little more on the insecurities that are in our lives, all right? Um, when they're self-inflicted, okay, drugs, alcohol, um, that puts a little different spin on it, right? Because then we're just, we're, we're, we're the same, we're like Jonah. We're just running from life, right? We're running from God. We're, we're running from this, you know, God, God puts you in a situation for a reason. You're to experience it, good and bad. You're to live through that. You know, Scripture tells us to be sober-minded, right? To have our wits about us, to have a, a clear understanding. He's not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and a sound mind, okay? How are you in sound mind when you're using some mood-altering drugs? That does not work. That puts you in a different understanding of everything. You look through it through the focus of those things instead of through the focus of God. Instead of through the focus of God. That's why we need to, you know, Paul talks about this in great detail where he says, you know, all things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are, are, are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of anything. Because if you're brought under the power of anything, no matter what it is, alcohol, drugs, silence, anxiety, depression, you know, hate even, hate, hate will overtake your life. You know, emotional outburst, anger, jealousy, all those things. Those are all negative feelings, right? Those are all negative. Those, those are the things that fight against the things that God is trying to do in your life. And so when God gives us the spirit, all right, when he gives us that spirit, immediately the spirit starts to work on our hearts. Immediately he's trying to work in our lives, all right? Most of the time, we go kicking and screaming the whole way. We, we, we really fight against the Spirit constantly. You know, the Scripture tells us don't grieve what the Spirit's trying. Don't grieve the Spirit. Don't grieve what God's trying to do in your life. So this whole fear issue, this whole... Yeah, right. Exactly, Julie. Yes, yes. Truth. The truth and God and focus, yes, on the principles, yes. So, and that's exactly where we're at here when we're doing this First John chapter 4. And he says that love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in the world. He's our, he's our example. We're to let him live through us. We're to reach out to others and kindness and understanding, even if, you know, though we don't agree with them. There, there's nothing to do with agreeing. This has nothing to do with agreeing with somebody. This has to do with who you are in your heart. Now, he says in verse 18, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. Fear involves torment. Why do we want to live our lives buried in these insecurities? We don't have to. The reason that we have fear, the reason, the reason that we have worry, the reason that all these things are happening in our lives, and it's, it's making us miserable, because we don't live the principles in which God has given us, and those four pillars of trust and faith and belief and hope, right, that need to be necessary for any relationship to flourish. They have to be there. Perfect fear, perfect love casts out fear. I don't have to worry about it. I know you're going to be there for me. I know, what, I, I know God, I know you love me. I know you have my best interest. I trust you, right? All those things are coming in. All those things are coming in. And then he, he goes on in that verse here, in, in verse 18, he says, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he loved us first. Perfect. Perfect. We love him because he loved us. He showed us how much he loves us. 
Again, Psalm 103. Psalm 103, the cross, okay? He doesn't deal with our deal with us the way he would with our inequities, right? With our sin, he doesn't deal in that thing anymore because the, the perfect love that he showed us on the cross has then taken those things away. As far as the east is from the west. He loved us first. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? Ouch. Ouch. We tend to vilify people in our society, especially lately. You know, I don't. You know, it's, it's it's easy to marginalize somebody uh, when you hate them. It's it, it's easy, right? Hate does not belong in our vocabulary. You may not agree with them, and that's fine. You know, but you don't push hate. You don't force people. You don't drive them, right? And, and, and unfortunately, that's the way the church is going today. Spiritual warfare, absolutely. Absolutely spiritual warfare, and that's exactly what I'm trying to get at. It's like we're not fighting against people. We're fighting against spiritual hosts, the principalities and powers, right? It's, it's because of our insecurities that we react in the way that we do that causes us to lose our hope, our faith, our belief, our trust. If we could just understand that. First, the first thing that needs to happen in, in order to heal, identify the problem. Identify the problem. You want to stop uh, abusing alcohol and drugs? Uh, if that's your issue, you want to stop doing that? Okay, what's the problem? It's not the alcohol and drugs. It's your brokenness and your inability to have trust, faith, and hope, right? You, you live in a broken relationship with God and with others. And therefore... You feel like I, I, I don't want to deal with this. You know, I need to be. I need to deaden my senses. I need to to, to deaden, you know, my feelings. I, I, and 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 you're right, Julian. It's exactly right. It's spiritual warfare is exactly what it is. I love that. If someone says, "I love God," he hates his brother. He is a liar, and he does not love his brother whom he has seen. How can he love God whom he has not seen? Also, this commandment we have found. We have from him that he who loves God must also love his brother. There, there is no push here, right? That's why we don't, you know, emotional outbursts are probably the most common instance, right? I'm offended, right? Uh, what you, you know, you offended me. I mean, that seems to be our, our go-to thing. Well, you know what? Let me, let me tell you a little something here. And hopefully this gets through. You have no right to be offended. God was not offended by you and everything that you've done. When you walked away from him, you, you know, like a, like a sheep, we have all gone astray. When you did those horrible things and you manipulated people and you talked bad about them and you drove them into the ground. And God says, I forgive you for those. I was not offended by those things. Therefore... We are not, because when we're offended, then forgiveness doesn't come into the picture. We're too busy grinding on the hate, right? We're offended. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the Holy Spirit. Now, <clears throat> I don't want to get too deep in here, right? I'm going to give you guys, I'm going to hit you guys with some prophecy here. And I'm, what I'm trying to do is relate this back to the reasons why we struggle. It's because we don't, we don't adhere to God. We don't adhere to the principles in which he's given forth to us, right? So I want to take you over to 2 Thessalonians 2. I sent this out late, but you should have it. In 2 Thessalonians 2, it says... In verse 5, do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you of these things? 
and now you know that what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time for the mystery of the lawlessness is already at work only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way so a couple things we need to identify here first is who's the one that is restraining right and the lawlessness is sin is in the world that's it sin is sin listen if there's anything we know and we see look what's going on in the middle east right now you know hate and, and it, it just rules it rules right it is in the world and it is working and it is at work but here's the scary thing it's being restrained who's the restrainer yeah i gave it away before we started and yeah it's the holy spirit so this is talking about when the church is going to be taken out, guess who goes with them? The restrainer, the Holy Spirit. That's what 2 Thessalonians is talking about here. So if we have him in our lives, then he should be a restrainer in our lives. Wow. So let's read this again. Let's read this again. He says, verse 5, do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. He's talking about the Antichrist. For the mystery of the lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. He's talking about the second coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan. With all power, signs, lying wonders, and with all unrighteousness, deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. So I'm telling you, wake up and accept the truth right? That you, our insecurity should not run away with us. We're supposed to have the spirit within us and he helps restrain the worst parts of our humanity. We need to listen to that. We need to listen to that and the voice that's in our head and it's in our heart. Verse 11, and for this reason, God will send them a strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. He's talking about unbelievers here. I'm using this to illustrate a couple of things. Number one, I'm using this to illustrate that <clears throat> the spirit that lives within us is there for a reason, right? Believers, those who trust in the truth of God, in the truth of their sal uh, their salvation, in the truth that they, God now lives inside of them and has changed their heart, right? He has changed it from that, that sinful nature that we were born into this world with into something that is more like the beginning when we were in that loving relationship with God and faith and trust and belief and hope, right? Listen, insecurities are always going to pop their ugly heads up. That's, that's just part of who we are. Paul talked about it, you know, in, in, in Romans 7, you know, why do I do the things I wish not to do and the things that I wish to do I don't do, and in fact, I, you know, I, I do them too often. You know, I'm paraphrasing, of course, but... We understand, you know, listen, they will pop their heads up. There's no issue with that. That's going to happen, right? Even Jesus got angry, but it said that he never took it to sin. And there's where the problem is. Insecurities that pop up are not the problem. When they drive us to sin, that's the problem. That's the problem, right? When we allow them to drive us to take it too far, that's the problem. So how, then how do we deal constructively when these insecurities pop up? And they will, right? 
maybe you're tired, you don't feel good, you know, you had a long day and you're a little short with somebody, you know. I say this. It can be difficult to listen to the Spirit because it is completely contrary to our human condition, right? That's what Galatians tells us. They, you know, the, the flesh and the spirit are contrary to one another, right? But I believe that the Holy Spirit is more like a muscle. The more you use it, the more you exercise it, the more you listen to it, the stronger it gets. And therefore, it helps us not to go too far. What if we go too far? Okay, that's a good question, right? Okay, I'm, I'm working on myself. I'm working on these situations. I understand I'm broken. That's why this, this is happening. So what happens if I go too far? Let's say I, I'm really short with somebody. I, I say some awful things to them. Um, and it's usually the people that you love that you do that to, right? And then, you know, what happens? What happens is that we end up <laughs> feeling bad. You know, we have, <laughs> you know, our, we're, we're getting, oh, man, I shouldn't have done that. And what, see, but this is, a, this is a, an opportunity to grow. This is an opportunity to grow. First of all, you've identified you went too far, which most people will never do. Right? They won't do it. But what do you do about it? What do you do about it once you say, you know, I was wrong here. I went too far. It's, then it comes time to what? I'm sorry. Can we, can, can we put that behind us? Can we, can we go on from here? Right? So then it becomes a growing thing for you and that person. And what is it restoring? Trust in your relationship. Do you, you see the way forgiveness has a way of doing that? Okay. I can now trust this person. I know they're not, number one, they're not afraid to, to say I was, they're wrong and they're not afraid to apologize for it, right? So now I have faith that our relationship can grow. And I have belief that we're both on the same page. Therefore, I have hope in the future. You see, God has given us the answer. He's given us the understanding that we need. He's given us the tools to now succeed. One of them is being humble, right? The other is to understand every once in a while, listen, our insecurities, are, <laughs> they're going to they're gonna take us with places we don't want to go. Well, here is what we need to understand. Number one, we may visit there, but we don't live there. And we do everything we can to come back into the strong confines of our Lord Christ. And we do that by making right that wrong in the moment, right? And the, the more, the more you do that, the easier it becomes, the better you then are about controlling it before it gets out of control, right? And those emotional outbursts will get less and less. You'll stop depending on drugs and alcohol, right? You won't abuse yourself or others. The hate will disappear out of your life and it will all start to become more about Jesus. So, I think we all, we all deal with these things. And, 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 you know, it's when we don't deal with them that they, they tend to get out of control, right? And uh, there's nothing wrong with, with having difficulties. And there's nothing wrong with, you know, confiding with others that, hey, you know, this is my issue. You know, I have these problems. There's nothing wrong with that. The problem becomes if we just try to band-aid over it with something. 
alcohol, drugs, whatever, whatever it may be, alcohol, you know, anger, frustration, jealousy, all those things are just band-aids that you're trying to put over the one thing that is the problem is that your broken relationship, that you have no love in that relationship, right? Remember what we talked, perfect love casts out fear. Perfect love. And there's only one perfect love, and that's what we get from God. And when we accept the, the Spirit into our lives, into our hearts, He brings us to a point where He says, now, now we can start healing. And that's what I wish for everyone, that we come to that point where we let God heal us. As Jesus said to Peter when he was trying to clean his feet, and Peter said, you're never going to clean my feet. And what did Christ say? He said, if you don't let me clean you, then you have no part in me. God wants to clean you. He wants you to help you deal with with these insecurities that you have in your life. Man, wouldn't it be so great if we don't have to live with those things anymore? We can... Boy, we just get so so out of whack sometimes, don't we? We do. All right. Uh, so next week, and Jules, I know I, I promised you uh, we're going to do some Deuteronomy. <laughs> yeah, I promise. I already had it ready. Uh, this kind of just came up, and I, I thought we would try it. And uh, I hope I hope you could even see it. And, but if you if if you're not getting the email, and you would like to get the email with the with everything that I send out, uh, you know, message me, message me. Don't don't post your email here. Everybody in the world is going to see it. All right. So if if you're not getting it, you want to get it, you're welcome to. I'll just put you on the email list. Um, more than happy to give it to you. All right. Um, Oh, thank you, Julie. Um, I will just, I'll just tell you. Um, so if you're not going over to YouTube, please go over. Please subscribe on our page over there. I will post this video in a few as soon as it finishes, and then I can upload it onto YouTube. And I know some people don't do Facebook, but um, like it, comment over there. Uh, we've been getting some traffic over there. It's, it seems to be going okay. You know, go ahead and, and help us out and go ahead and do that, and we can... You know, the whole idea is to reach uh, more people with this message, uh, because I will tell you, this is common to everyone. You know, we all, yeah, we all deal with this stuff, man. And, you know, and that's okay. You know, we're all broken. We all haven't, you know, and, but when we can be honest about it, you know, I think that goes a long way into dealing with this more in, in constructive ways. Okay. So anyway, um, Let's pray. <laughs> As always, right? Communication is, is and you know, I, I really love, uh, you know, praying with you guys and being with you guys. Um, even if it's just online, it's awesome. Uh, you know, Sunday, please tune in, 1030. Um, you know, we have, we have a great, we have a great time on Sundays. We have a good discussion. Hopefully it's coming through. Yes, build the kingdom. Yes, yes, ma'am. Build the kingdom. That's our that's our only command. Build the kingdom. Love God. Love others. We do, when we love God and we love others, we naturally will build the kingdom. We naturally will build the kingdom. That we have to realize everything is connected together, right? If if we're living in this place where we're supposed to be living in trust and faith and belief and hope, you know, and, and in a loving relationship with God, and then therefore others, right? Love God. Love others. And and so when we're in that place, when we're in that place we can't help but build the kingdom, <laughs> right? People see you and go, wow, what's up with this guy? What's up with this girl? You know, I want some of that. And, and that's awesome. And that's awesome. Okay, let's pray. Let's pray. And then I will let you guys go. And hopefully I'm going to take a look at this video, make sure it came out okay. And then we'll see about posting it on YouTube. And you go on there and like it. Father, thank you. Thank you that you've given us the tools that we need to succeed in this life to work for you, to serve others in the fact that we ourselves are no longer dependent upon these things, that our insecurities don't run away with us. Father, we know that we're broken and that we have difficulties, but we also know that you love us and we have trust and faith 
that you are who you are and you will do what you promised to do. Therefore, we believe all that and we definitely have hope for the future and hope for this life right now. So, Father, we thank you again for this time that we could spend together just talking about how great you are and how, how your love just conquers all things and that how that love should really rule in our lives. So, again, bless all those that are here, all those that will be here, all those that will watch later, Lord. May it always be about you and your kingdom and your love. And it is in Christ's name that we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.